Hey everyone and welcome to part one in basic encryption. This week we're going to start the ball rolling on Mac OS X. Uh, this is going to be 10.11.3 and as you can see I'm running a stock version of uh, OS X El Capitan. Uh, we'll just go right here to see which version and as you can see we're on 10.11.3 3, which as time of recording this is the latest version of Mac OS so this is a fresh install stock components no other external or uh, uh, no other software has been installed on this Macintosh this is just the basic install of Mac OS 10 so first off what we're going to do we're going to install uh, GPG which is the open source version of PGP. Now, for those of you that might be in the know, PGP was very popular in the 1990s and was part of the first uh, crypto wars. Uh, PGP was then purchased by Symantec, um, but uh, well, even though they purchased the software, the source code was made uh, was was released to open source, and thus we have GPG. Uh, what we're going to do here for the Mac is open up the GPG version for the Mac. So we're going to fire up Safari here, and we're going to go to gpgtools.org. So I'll just type that in. And we'll shoot over to that website. gpgtools.org is the website that uh, basically offers a pre- uh, put together package of the tools that you can use on your Mac. Now you can of course download the source code and compile it yourself and run that on your Mac and we may do that at a future date but right now we're going to show how to install the uh, the predefined packages. Now as you can see this is a little old. This is from September 24th of last year. It says El Capitan we're almost ready. Well they are ready, basically. The The feature that they're referring to here is basically to get GPG Mail working on El Capitan. And that may or may not work, but we're not going to use GPG Mail. In fact, I never use GPG Mail when I install encryption. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can't send encrypted email. You absolutely can. GPG Mail is a function that plugs into Apple Mail, as you can see right here, the Apple Mail client, where you can encrypt and decrypt mail on the fly in the client itself. Now, if you're running OS 10 uh, Yosemite, uh, OS 10.10, .10, or before, uh, then GPG Mail will work just fine. If you're running on El Capitan, you might run into some problems if you want to use GPG Mail. Uh, in this tutorial, we are not going to be using GPG Mail, but I'm still going to show you how to encrypt uh, your email. So uh, here's some of the packages. This is the package basically that you'll get when you install GPG Mail or do the GPG suite on your Mac. You'll get GPG for Mail, which uh, we're not going to use. GPG Keychain, which we are going to use, GPG Services, which we're going to use, and Mac GPG, which we're absolutely going to use. So let's go ahead and get the ball rolling here and download the GPG suite. So we'll start the download right now, and we'll go right here, and you can see the download is beginning, and we'll be back in just a moment. A few moments later... Okay, and by the magic of whatever. Uh, as you can see, the GPG suite has downloaded successfully. So I'm going to go down here to my download folder, and there it is. That is the DMG. Let's go ahead and click on that. And uh, it's verifying. Just take a second while it verifies. And checking them out. There it is. And right over here, you will see the GPG tool suite install. So we're going to go ahead and install this. We'll double click on install. And we'll see these are the things that are going to be installed here. We'll click continue. Now, what I want to do is customize it because I'm installing this on 10.11 uh, El Capitan. Um, the, the GPG mail might not be completely functional and I'm not going to use it anyway, so I figure why install it? So I'll go ahead and click on customize and GPG mail right here. GPG mail right here on top. I will go ahead and uncheck that and we will skip, but everything else we will install. 
So we'll click install. And let's go ahead and put in my password. Click install software. And away we go. The installation begins. And running package scripts just takes a second to install. And there you go. Now what we need to do is generate a public key. So I'm going to go ahead and just minimize the Safari right here. Okay, so let's see. I will be, for uh, the, the duration of this uh, tutorial, I will be, of course, James Kirk. And my email address will be Com. I will not upload it because, of course, this is a fictitious <laughs> email. And password will be, I don't know, password. And now, uh, oh, that didn't match. <laughs> Can't even type password. There we go. So the password is password. So, uh, of course, you do not want to use password as password. You want it to be as secure as possible. The only weak link, really, in using uh, public key encryption is the password. So you're going to want your password to be as secure as possible. In other words, as hard to guess as humanly possible. But uh, not that hard where um, you're going to forget it. Because once you do start using encryption on a regular basis, whether it be for secure communications via email or encrypting, encrypting certain files on your computer, um, if you do uh, forget what the password is, um, those files and or communications will be lost to you forever. You will never ever be able to access those files or communications again. So while you do need a secure passphrase and or password, uh, you want to pick something that you can remember. So right here you can see um, you can change the length of the uh, encryption. Right now the default is 4096. And we have uh, RSA and R uh, RSA default, but you can change this as need be, but I'm just going to leave it as is. And now we're going to go ahead and generate that key. We're going to generate your public and private encryption keys. So we'll click on generate. Uh, the simple press. <laughs> so it's, it's warning me here. It's basically telling me that choosing password for my passphrase is not secure. But uh, you can enter a new one, but I'm going to continue just for the... Uh, now, to generate a lot of random bytes, you've a good idea to perform some other tasks, like moving around, or just uh, clicking and uh, typing stuff on your keyboard. Ooh, not a sound that is. There we go. So it's randomly generated. And here we go. Here is my public... As I got my public and secret uh, key. So... Let's go ahead and double click right here. We can see some more information. The RSA, blah, blah, blah. I can add a little photo here if need be. User IDs, sub keys. I can add a photo. I'm not going to do that. But there you have it. I'm not going to send it to a server. I'm not going to do anything like that. But I can copy it. If I copy the key, and I can close out of that. I can close this. And I'm done with this, so I'll eject that. Now, if I go to finder go to my applications and go to text edit now I've just copied the key and now I can paste it and here you go here is my public encryption key for the account that I just made uh, as this is public I can post this anywhere anywhere on the internet uh, I can add it to my uh, my website so I can put like hey if you want to send me some secure uh, communications um, you can go ahead and post this on your website and people can use this to to encrypt um, data and or communication sending it to you. Now, they use your public key to encrypt the information they send to you so that you can decrypt it on your end so that nobody else can access um, that file. That's the basics of public key encryption. So I've created this key. I publish this key wherever I want, or I send it to somebody that I want to send, so they can send me secure information. 
they would use this key to encrypt their communication and or documents or data to send to me. Once they have encrypted it with this, day, with this key, they cannot decrypt it. Only I can. So when they send it to me, I can decrypt the data. So let me give, me, give you an example of that. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. I'm not going to save it. Uh, but I will create another document. And I will call this the testing document. So I'll test. And I'll type test again. And then I will save it. Oops. And I will save it to my desktop. And I will call it test. There you go. So it's a text format. Uh, I want to see the extension. I'll say save it. And there it is right there. So there's the document. So I can close that. And if I double click on it, there it is, test. So I want to encrypt this and send it to somebody. So I will right click on it. And I'll go down to services. And I will choose encrypt file, open PGP. And here we go. Now this will pop up the choose the recipients. Now, right now, I only have one key on here. Well, I have two, the GPT, GPG tools team. I'm not going to send it to them. So I will highlight mine. And I will encrypt with a password. And I'll click OK. And now it's going to ask me for my passphrase, which is, of course, password. I will click OK. Re-enter it. Click OK. The encryption is now finished. So... Here we have the original, which is still there, test. And here we have the uh, encrypted version. Now, if I open with if I open with the GPG services, if I double click on it, it's going to prompt me for my passphrase to uh, decrypt it. But I don't want to do that. I want to show you the encryption. So what I'm going to do is open this up with text edit again. So I'll open it. And here you go. Here is the encrypted message. So here's the real message. This is the decrypted message. This is the regular test test message. And this is the encrypted message once it's encrypted. So this file right here, I can send this to my intended recipient, which is, of course, me. And um, only I can decrypt it. So let's go ahead and decrypt it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this, move it to trash, delete this, move it to trash. So now all I have left is this encrypted version. So I will double click on it. Props for my password, which is, of course, password. The password is password. <laughs> so I hit OK. And it's decrypted. And here we go. There it is. We open it again. Test, test, and it's back. And that's essentially how you encrypt things. Well, that basically covers the installation of GPG encryption on OS X and a very basic look on how to encrypt a file. Next time on Basic Encryption, we're going to talk about Windows and how to get that working under encryption. Until next time.